That was completed in Humboldt this morning. Areas that we were worried about just uh, rerouting for power. So if you know someone that lives and works in that area, we are looking out for you too. We want to make sure everybody is prepared. So I want to actually show you, if it's okay, a look at the power outages happening right now. Some of these places, people have been without power for more than a day. Now we are learning that more than 600,000 people are still without power. PG&E has restored power to, get this, 50,000 people in the Sierra Foothills, so actually some good news, and expect to restore power for another 60 to 80,000 people a little bit later on today, and I'm really hoping that's me as well. <laughs> yeah, I know that's mm -hmm. right. Okay, so we have team coverage on this for you because we got your back, we want you to stay updated with everything you need to know. Giacomo Luca is in Morago, where a fire actually started overnight. Yes, and Carlos Herrera is in Nevada City watching over things in that area as well. Okay, but Tracy is tracking the winds because yeah. they are at the core of the outages. Tracy, yes. tell us, is there any relief inside or we mm. need to hunker down for a couple mm. more days? Well, we will have some relief by the end of the day today, at least for the valley locations for our hills and our mountains. Your relief will come a little bit later on tonight through early tomorrow morning. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on. So we'll start things off kind of taking a look and kind of getting a, a overall perspective of what's happening. I actually live in Placer County, so I do have power outages. I'm going into day two as well, probably with many of you, 620,000 PG&E customers without power. Yes, I'm one of them. So let's take a look, start things off, taking a look at our graphics. This is a picture I took last night before I went to bed. And way off in the distance there, that is the Sacramento. Those are the lights associated with Sacramento. So from Penryn to Loomis, all the way up to Rockland, we don't have any power. So that is miles of uh, areas there that are completely blacked out. So it is a little creepy at night because it is so quiet and you don't see anything. But you know what? Uh, I'm kind of getting used to it. Uh, well, at least six wildfires are burning across California this morning. Forecasters say high winds and low humidity are increasing the chances of danger. The conditions led to the state's largest utility, power utility that is, to shut off electricity to more than 700,000 customers. Jonathan Vigliotti is in Sonoma, California. Uh, uh, Jonathan, just uh, I see it's dark where you are. What has been the effect of all these outages? Yeah, it's, it's very dark right now. We're actually on Main Street, Sonoma. Some of the hardest hit areas are these local communities. It almost looks like a Hollywood set here. The power was cut here early yesterday morning ahead of all of the high winds. A lot of people telling us they were only given a few hours notice before the lights went off. The high winds that fueled wildfires late Wednesday continued overnight. The dangerous mix of swaying trees and power lines would increase the wildfire threat if the power wasn't already cut. Ron Blassingame is coping with the blackout. I should have bought a generator. <laughs> those are gone. Yeah, they're gone. Nobody has those. He says Pacific Gas and Electric hasn't been doing its job to keep its infrastructure safe. They haven't cleared the brush from their lines, but they want to pay dividends and give their executives money. It's a public utility. You know, we're paying for that. And what's your message to bg &E? Do your job. Protect the public. Many waited in long lines to fill their gas tanks before the pumps lost electricity and shut down. Here we go. Mary Freeman's home improvement store lost power but managed to stay open, guiding customers by flashlight to buy, among other things, flashlights. There's a lot of people coming in here. Is it fair to say some of them were caught off guard by this? Oh, for sure. Unfortunately, we've run out of some of those products that they need. You just turn it on. Debbie Medina relies on her CPAP and oxygen generators to stay alive. Her condition prevents her from getting to community centers. What are you going to do with people like myself? Because I know I'm not the only one. All right, Jonathan, uh, California authorities are reporting an egging of a PG&E office, threatening letters being sent, uh, shooting at one of the trucks. Why are people so frustrated with the company and how is PG&E responding? Yeah, that, that shooting happened back on Tuesday. From reports, it was a person opening fire uh, at a PG&E vehicle. Fortunately, the driver was not injured. The motive at this point is still unclear, but you can imagine a lot of people are frustrated. They do, see, they do say that they feel like they're being punished by what they're calling PG&E's failures. This is only day two now of some communities being in the dark, like here in Sonoma. We could have as many as three more days to go 
before the lights are turned back on. So you could imagine that frustration only mounting, especially in some communities where the winds haven't even picked up. So a lot of people saying what was even the need for turning the power off? So I know for PG&E, they say that this is preventative. I mean, they are, you know, they have faced incredible lawsuits. So they owe, you know, millions and millions of dollars because of the wildfires that have already, they've already been de deemed responsible for. You know, what are their options here? So they're doing the blackout, but what else are they doing to ensure that these communities are protected? Yeah, PG&E says that they're investing billions of dollars over the next four years to upgrade the system, specifically making safety upgrades. But this is going to be a really a long-term problem that communities here in California are going to face for a very long time. And to put this in perspective, PG&E saying it could cost as much as $100. 10 billion dollars that's billion with a b to remove all of the overhead wiring and placing it underground so you can imagine it's a lot of work it costs a lot of money they've even told customers already that they could face significant increases in their bills again this goes back to the frustration a lot of customers saying they already pay enough money for what should be safe power yeah when you told us about these blackouts yesterday i started to sort of think about all the ways in which your life is affected when you don't have power and we're showing some video of inside a bakery you know restaurants just all the food you know that's going to spoil people with electric cars they need their cars charged but what about like hospitals and schools these are really important resources yeah, fortunately, most hospitals do have their power on. Schools, a different scenario here. We're told 1,400 schools uh, were closed yesterday and today and will probably be impacted in the long term as this continues for a few more days. I, I think most pressing, we spoke with a number of people who said they didn't really get enough notice only a few hours before the lights were cut off. We said that earlier, and that really hampers their efforts to go and get prepared. That's why we saw a lot of people, even as the lights were off, being directed by flashlight to go and buy flashlights and batteries, among other things. But of course, something as simple as communication, a big concern, cell phones. Without them, you can't communicate and tell other people that you're okay or, God forbid, an emergency. We've had people that have actually come up to us using our generator to charge their phones. Of course. All right, Jonathan Vigliotti, thank you. Yeah. Extreme winds and hot, dry weather have caused multiple fires across Southern California. As crews in Silmar work to fight back the flames of the Saddle Ridge fire, others led these horses away from the danger. Other areas like Calamesa continue to face the dangers of the Sandalwood fire late Thursday night. The fire started right behind us. It was a trash truck that was carrying a, a, heavy, a, a load that caught on fire. Several hours after that fire started, dozens of homes were destroyed. The wind was so intense that that it just engulfed the whole park. It was just, it, it was so fast, there was just no way. 50 miles east of Los Angeles in Fontana, homes were burning just as the power company shut off electricity in the area to prevent new fires from popping up. I was coming down the street and I saw a lot of smoke coming out. Southern California Edison warned that thousands more could lose service as the Santa Ana winds continue to gain strength. It just shows us that I guess we were not prepared. We we're charging the phones in the car to at least have that. We had a couple of flashlights and hopefully it will come back on tomorrow. In the northern part of the state, utility company PG&E faced criticism from residents and California's governor after it shut down power to hundreds of thousands of customers. We simply could not continue to run parts of this system given the risk to public safety. Residents say PG&E's system should have been improved to avoid these types of blackouts. 